These days, if you're looking for a new cassette deck with auto reverse and Dolby noise reduction, you're not going to find any because they don't make any new cassette decks with those features anymore. But if you're lucky, you can find a new old stock cassette deck from the 90s with those features that is unused and still in its original box. So I was surprised to find one on eBay for only $45 plus shipping and it was sent to me in its original box. It was made in Japan, but it's from a company you've probably never heard of before, TOA. That's because they don't sell to the consumer market. They specialize in audio equipment for commercial use, such as for auditoriums, churches, schools, and other things like that. So this was a cassette deck designed for commercial use. It's the model BA-823. The sticker on the box says Chicago, and the seller I got it from is located in Illinois, not too far away from Chicago. And there's this other sticker here, which is probably the serial number. It begins with 92, and I have a feeling that means this deck was made in 1992. So there it is inside the box, still in its original styrofoam and plastic bag and with the original owner's manual on top. And right away you'll notice it's quite a bit larger and heavier than a normal cassette deck. And if you look inside the cooling vents you can see an unusually large power transformer and also a large heatsink. And it has a very thick power cord with a grounded three-prong plug. Again, not something you normally see on a cassette deck. That's because this was originally designed to be a background music system, but unlike most of them, this one plays in stereo, it supports chrome and metal tapes, and it has Dolby noise reduction. And it's a double cassette deck with two slot loading mechanisms. There you can see TOA double cassette play amplifier, BA823, a switch for Dolby noise reduction, and it says auto reverse. I found a mention of these decks in the July 28th, 1992 issue of Sound communications magazine. It says TOA Electronics has introduced the BA-800 series of dual cassette players designed for foreground background music applications. Unfortunately they don't mention any prices probably because these units were leased rather than sold as is typical for background music systems. There's the sticker confirming that it has Dolby noise reduction manufactured under license from Dolby Laboratories and even though it has a microphone input and a peak level indicator that is not for recording. This is only a playback deck and this is for use as a PA system so you can make announcements. And it has full logic soft touch controls for ejecting both tapes, play, and stop. You know something missing? There's no rewind and no fast forward. But it does have blank skip and you can choose how the auto reverse works. There's that same serial number we saw in the box and it says output power is rated at 30 watts per channel. And here are the left and right speaker outputs, again using screw terminals. But these are just standard speaker outputs. It's not designed for 70 volt speaker systems or anything fancy like that. It also has link and timer connections which I'll talk about later. Of course even though it is new and unused we still want to make sure it works because it's around 30 years old and you never know if the belts might have melted and turned to goo so I'll turn it on I have it connected to a pair of speakers now and I'll take my test tape and put it in the first deck press play and hope for the best Certainly sounds like it's working. Okay, stop that and eject the first deck. Let's try deck number two and press play. Sounds like that one's working too. This tape doesn't say it's Dolby encoded, so I'm not going to try the Dolby right now. And I noticed even though this is auto reverse, there is no way to manually trigger it to flip to the other side. It can only auto reverse at the end of the tape. You can see as a signal light that lights up when you turn up the volume. 
and this thing gets very loud. I'm not even going to try to make this peak LED light up. That's really only when the amplifier is clipping, and that would be very loud. <laughs> And there are more controls in the back. You get bass and treble controls for up to plus or minus 10 dB. A balance control. You get level controls for the two aux inputs. The first one has standard left and right RCA jacks. The second one has screw terminals and it's only mono. Let's try out those bass and treble and balance controls. They definitely are effective. You get optional automatic gain control to make the playback level more consistent across tapes recorded at different levels. The microphone input is a little bit unusual because instead of a standard quarter inch or 3.5 millimeter jack, it uses screw terminals and it's actually balanced 600 ohms. So I believe you could connect an XLR microphone to this if you have an adapter to convert it from the XLR plug to the spade terminals here. And this deck has automatic detection for chrome and metal tapes. So here is a chrome tape, as it says on the label, with Dolby B noise reduction. And it has the extra wide notches indicating it requires chrome tape equalization. So stick it in, switch on Dolby, and press play. Sounds pretty good to me. The one drawback of this model is that the line output is also these screw terminals, but it's also only mono. The only way to get stereo out of this is through those speaker outputs. But I'm hoping there's gonna be some easy way to tap into a stereo line output inside it, because as you can see on the cover of the manual, T-Way sold several different models of these cassette players, and this first one here, the BA-800, was only a playback deck. It did not have a built-in amplifier, so that one did have regular RCA left and right stereo line level outputs on it. The BA-806 has a mono built-in amplifier and the BA-823 has a stereo built-in amplifier. And the specifications are pretty good. The frequency response is 50 to 15,000 hertz. Signal to noise ratio is 50 dB with Dolby noise reduction off and 60 dB with Dolby noise reduction on. And the wow and flutter is less than 0.2% WRMS. And as for the built-in amplifier of the BA823 model, the output power is 30 watts per channel in stereo with less than 0.5% distortion at that rated output. It's designed for four ohm speakers. And these timer terminals are contact closures. If you ground the one on the right, it'll automatically start the deck playing. And if you ground the one on the left, it'll automatically stop the deck. So this can be used with a timer to automatically turn on the player when a business opens in the morning. Somebody ringing the bell. Do me a favor. Open the door. I let them in. Closing time. Open all the doors and Then it can automatically shut it off at the end of the day when the business closes. With this link feature, you can connect up to three additional units. So if you had four of these units in total, each of them containing two 90 minute cassettes, then you could have up to 12 hours of continuous music without repetition. To demonstrate the automatic playback function of this deck, I prepared two tapes. This one has synthesizer music on the A side and Mozart on the B side. So I'll stick that in deck number one. This one has some commercials 
and station IDs on this side and on the B side it has jingles. So I'll stick that in deck number two. Now I'll press play and you'll observe the order in which it plays them. music you'll find anywhere on the air on the web 24 hours a day continuous music so i played the a side of both tapes in number one first and then number two and now it's playing the B side of the number one deck. And when that finishes, it'll play the B side of deck number two, and the process will repeat. There's about 25 seconds of blank tape at the end of the Mozart side, so you should hear the blank skip feature kicks in after about 10 seconds of silence. You can see it fast forwarded to the end of this tape and when that stopped it switched over to the other tape. And if you eject one tape while it's playing, it will automatically switch over to the other tape. So I'll eject the jingle tape and it'll switch back to the music tape. And I'll eject that one and it'll switch to tape number two again. Personality ID. George Mason. Mix 107.3. So you could actually use this deck as a crude form of radio automation if you had one tape loaded up with music and then a shorter tape with some commercials or station IDs on it. And as it switches back and forth between them, you could keep swapping out tapes to load new music or new commercials. And that would be your cassette-based radio station. Now, we take it off another extra long set of music. Here's a look inside, and this thing is seriously well built. Just look at the size of this power transformer. And everything's well laid out. You have the power supply here, you have the preamp board back here, and the main power amplifier board down here with the big heatsink. And then of course the two cassette mechanisms. Unfortunately, I'm not having any luck finding date codes on the components inside, so the serial number beginning with 92 is still my best guess that this was made in 1992. But here's the amplifier chip. It's an STK4151, and I looked it up and it is indeed rated at 30 watts per channel, but that's a very conservative rating because that's at only 0.02% total harmonic distortion, not 10% distortion like a lot of amplifiers are rated at. With some gentle prying at the clips on the bottom, this plastic trim piece can be removed, revealing the cassette mechanisms. And there the information sticker says it's a model number SP7500 SDI. It was made in Japan. And the logo says 10. T 
T-E-N. Now the question is, who is or who was Ten? My best guess is Fujitsu Ten, because they were the supplier of car stereos to Toyota and other major Japanese auto manufacturers. So since this is basically a car stereo mechanism, my guess is that these were made by Fujitsu Ten in Japan. And because this system could be optionally rack mounted, these mechanisms were designed to be taken out and serviced from the front. So you just have to remove two screws on the side, and then the whole thing easily slides out of the front. And they even give you enough slack on the cable to easily remove it once it's taken out of the system. So just careful prying on that. And now the entire cassette mechanism is taken out and ready to be serviced or replaced. There's the underside of the mechanism. There is one built in there, but it's hidden underneath this metal shield. And there's the Dolby noise reduction chip. It's a Hitachi HA12134A. Here's the speed and wow and flutter test of deck number one. The wow and flutter is pretty good. It's only around 0.11% WRMS, but the speed is rather fast. It's almost 2% too fast, but each motor has a hole in the top in which you can stick a small flat blade screwdriver or preferably a non-conductive adjusting tool specially made for the purpose to adjust the speed until it's correct. And here's deck number two before doing any adjustments. And again the speed is a bit fast, around 1.6% fast, but the wow and flutter is also pretty good on this one also around 0.11%. So the build quality and serviceability of this unit is absolutely phenomenal. 10 out of 10, no pun intended. To try to find that line output, I decided to go for the madman months approach and just start disconnecting things until it no longer works. Bingo. And if this looks like the same kind of plug that was used to connect to the CD-ROM audio input of some old sound cards, that's because it is. This is a so-called universal CD-ROM audio cable, so it has all these different connectors. But if you look at number four here, the connector and pinout are identical. From left to right, we have ground, left channel, then the third one there is not connected to anything, and then on the fourth pin is the right channel. That plug fit perfectly, and now I have this connector, which I can plug directly into the CD-ROM audio input of a computer sound card. How convenient. There's the cable going from the output of the tape deck into the CD-ROM input of the sound card in my Compact Desk Pro EN. Now if I press play on the tape deck, there's the music coming out of my monitor speakers and I can record it into the computer. Play back what I recorded. Perfect. Now I'll give you a direct hookup sample of two selections from the Backtracks music library, played from metal tape with Dolby B noise reduction. See if you can guess which 1980s songs these were inspired by.
as of when I'm making this video, there are still a few of these left on eBay. Just search for TOA BA823 and you'll find it. But they probably won't last long because people won't want to miss this opportunity to get a new in-box double cassette deck of auto reverse and Dolby noise reduction and a built-in 30 watt per channel amplifier that works perfectly and sounds great. This thematic minute-long instrumental bed can be used for traffic reports, promos, or other station features. 